Well, I broke my turn signal switch again. Let me show you uh, what's going on here. So this is a complete replacement uh, part versus just the cam uh, piece. When I first bought the car, one of these uh, plastic arms was broken, which is, this is the canceling cam right here. So there's a cam on the, uh, it's actually the canceling lobe, um, but there's a cam on the steering wheel and it clicks this left or right, depending on, you know, which signal you have on, obviously, and it'll disengage the switch. Uh, what that, what I did there was I just replaced this piece. So you drill this rivet out, you put the new one on there and there's a spring clip that goes on here that replaces this. Uh, I don't have it apart yet, but I can only assume how it's broken uh, based on what it's doing. I'm guessing that the spring clip came off. We'll find out when we get in there. But the bitch about this, when I replaced it before, was that you have to splice these two wires in there. And it's really tight because the new cam comes with these riveted on here. Because this is the actual contact in here. So when you turn the turn signal switch, this thing is actually... I can't do it one-handed here, but that's what makes the contact, this moving back and forth. This actually slides uh, right here. When you put, This is where the handle goes, and it moves these two pieces against each other. So anyways, um, I just opted to replace the whole thing. So we've, we've got the new replacement here. I also got a new housing plug uh, for it. It makes it easier rather than reusing the old one. You can because you can actually press these clips back. I actually have the tool to do that. Um, but it'd just make it easier to cut the old one out, put this, feed these wires down the column, and then we reinstall the uh, we reinstall the plugs into the or the terminals into this uh, housing, the shell right there. So I recommend just getting one of these when this breaks. Cause like I said, the arm broke off right here. The plastic is brittle over the years. A very happy Thanksgiving to everyone, too. By the way, it is Thanksgiving. And as I mentioned before, uh, my, you know, turn signal switch is not working like it's supposed to. So the left, it still cancels, but obviously something is not, something's broken inside the cam for the right. It's not canceling anymore. Um, we're going to take it apart and see what broke in it, but I'm almost certain it's probably either one of the plastic tabs broke again, or that spring clip has come off and it's not sitting on there right like I said, just replace the whole thing. Don't just replace the cam. It's just not worth the effort. Uh, that's what I've found out. So we're going to take that off of there. And you need a steering wheel puller. Um, we have to take this nut off of here. Uh, note the position. Now I know how this goes on. This happened to have a marking in it, so I know that this is straight up. But try and keep the wheel straight so you know how it goes back on. Then you need a steering wheel puller like this. Available just about every parts store and Amazon anywhere you can get one of these uh, Makes it really easy to get the steering wheel off. So let's get that nut off of there and pop this guy out Now I've found that a uh, 15 16 deep well socket on a uh, half inch drive ratchet Gets in here just right. I can bring it in underneath the steering wheel right here And I can get it in there so that seems to fit really well and it'll take a little bit of effort to get that off but once you bust it loose it just comes right off okay so you set that aside and now you can put your puller on there and you can see where the puller's been on here before uh, so you know these are i think uh, 5 16 uh, 24 or whatever thread pitch the fine i forget what fine pitch uh, 5 16 is but uh it comes with the, the kits come with the right bolt. So you simply thread those in by hand. You don't need to tighten them down with a ratchet or anything like that. Just, you know, get five, 10 threads in there, make them even, and then uh, use a nine sixteenths because this is a three eighths bolt to so nine sixteenths. And it should just come off, you know, it should pop off relatively easily. If it hasn't been off in a long time, you might have to wrench on it a little bit, but it will pop. Okay, so pop the steering wheel off. It actually came off really easily, but it's a brand new steering wheel and uh, it hasn't been on there that long. So these are the cams. It presses on these. The cam actually pushes down on each one of these as it goes by. So if you turn it right, when the cam hits it that way, it'll flick it up. And that one's not broken. This would be the right side and see it's broken. So 
that's really disappointing. This is not that old, so it's not anything with my repair, which you can see in here how tight this was having to splice this in here. That's really disheartening to know that that broke after about a year, year and a half maybe. So that's just, you know, the old one lasted 50 years before it broke. And, uh, oh well, anyways, I'll get off my soapbox on that. So we're going to just change the whole thing because trying to replace just this cam in here is a real pain in the ass. And this one obviously didn't last that long. So I got the Daniel Carpenter one, which is what CJ sells and gets what's available. We're just going to change this whole thing. So uh, there's a little bit of effort involved here. Um, we got to kind of take... Uh, we we got to take these three screws out. I think that the shroud comes off here. I'm not positive. Um, you know, obviously the handle here just unscrews. Uh, but we're changing this whole unit. Um, and before we get any further ahead with this, we're going to get underneath and unplug it. Because we do have voltage right here. This is for the horn. There's 12 volts on one of these all the time. Uh, it is directly driven from here. So uh, we got to make sure we unplug it before we get in here and mess with anything because we'll short it out and blow a fuse. Uh, so there's a plug right here. That's this harness that comes down here. We're going to get underneath here. I, I can't really show it, but you see it right there as it's starting to show up. We're just going to yank that uh, plug apart right there. Okay, so we're unplugged under there. I pulled these three screws out. Um, note that this does have a direction. Uh, I don't think you'd be able to put it on wrong anyways, but this uh, definitely has to go on here a certain way because it's obviously thicker over here than it is over there. This stuff's all going to be a little bit greasy, so just be cognizant of that, as you're, especially if you're working around a new interior like I am. Um, so this should come loose now. And, well, that's broken. Should we knew that already. Uh, oh, you know what? It doesn't. And I'll tell you why. Uh, because the shaft that it spins on is down inside of here. Um, so uh, I actually have to figure this out because I've never had this apart before. But um, I'm almost certain that this shroud has to come off of here. And I'm thinking that we just take, uh, that we just take these nuts off. I'll let you know here in a second. Okay, sorry. I had to stare at that for a second. So you, you actually loosen these two screws, not these... These actually hold the bearing carrier in. Um, these two uh, machine screws right here, whatever they are, yeah, they're just kind of self-tappers. Take those loose and the shroud comes off the back. See, now we can get to this here. This is what we got to get to. Um, and I got to see about that rubber insulator. I'm guessing we just pull that out of the bottom and then thread it onto the new wires. Um, but this is what's important to get out of the way right here is this shroud. So those two screws right there. And you can see the one that's still in here down there. The switch just lifts out of here. There's nothing retaining it. It's just sitting uh, on a pin there. The only thing that holds it down are the three screws. So we'll get this all cleaned up. We got to make sure we grease this. This is the original grease that's in here. Um, we'll check the bearing in here. Uh, that actually seems like it's still okay. It's got a little bit of play, but that's expected for its age. Um, so we're in good shape there. Uh, of course, <laughs> when I put the brake light in in the rear, the center brake light, I accidentally threaded the wire through the harness for this, and you probably can't see it. But uh, So, I, I mean, you got to clip this off anyways or depin this. Um, I don't know if my depinning tool will fit this, so I'll probably just clip it. Um, but I'll clip it in a way that I know what order the wires go in. And uh, I'll, I'll clip it off, and then we'll just slide it out. And what I might do is just leave one wire in here. I'll leave one wire, the old harness. Uh, potentially, I think I could probably do that. And we'll use that to pull the uh, new wires in, I think. That might be a good idea. We can just use one wire that's left. So apparently I should have checked the schematic, but there's actually a separate two-wire plug here, which is fine. We can reuse the shell. Um, there are eight wires on the switch. Um, I didn't look at the schematic because I just went off online and it just said, you know, buy the shell for it, for the main connector. Uh, so not a big deal, but it's just something to be aware of. I thought maybe there was something extra in here. Uh, I'm betting these are all turn signal and power for the horn. I'm not sure what this is because you've only got turn signal and horn in there. So, uh, we'll have to take a look at the schematic and see what that's all about. But anyways, we'll just, uh... You sneak a screwdriver down in here and 
uh, pop those pop those out of there we'll reuse that shell that actually that connector looks an awful lot like the uh, MSD connectors I think it probably is the same okay so that pulled out pretty easy you can see I left one wire I clipped it and it's still going out of the plastic or rubber uh, protective sleeve in there so uh, we'll see if we can I'll probably be better off pulling that sleeve out and manually putting it back on the new wires uh, but this will just make it easier instead of having to shove them down the tube we'll just tape them to it and pull it back and here's the old one we pulled it out so I just taped it to the old uh, one of the old wires like I said that's why I left that in there it should make it easy to pull it through there you know you never know exactly how this is going to work out but we'll try we'll see if I made it too big to go through or not if I did I can just flatten it out so let's see this is a little bit tricky to get in here. Might have made it might have made it a little bit big. Give me a second here. Okay, so I just had to kind of push down on it a little bit to get it in there. Now I should be able to just Well, I failed. <laughs> That's what happened. I didn't tape the end of the wire well enough. So we'll pull it back out of there and do it again. Okay, so we got it in there. I just had to tape it up a little bit better you know sometimes with electric tape too when you're tape if you want to use it to hold wires together to pull it you want to stretch the electric tape as you put it around it you know really put some tension on it so uh, i'm probably gonna need two hands to do this um, but it's very easy to feed one wire through you're trying to feed all these through here even though it's really designed to do that without a pull wire is going to make it very difficult by the time you get to the end here it's not going to want to come out so definitely definitely tape a wire to the end of it to pull them through all right we got it just pulled it through there also be very careful as you're pulling this through here even i shaved just a little bit of insulation off you want to try and keep these as flat as possible as soon as it catches that edge it's going to start shaving the insulation you don't want that to happen so now uh we're gonna put this back together we'll leave the steering wheel off so i can it gives me room to get under the dash here and then we're going to sort out these wires You'll notice when I cut these off, I left lead length here so I know where they go um, because I can I go off the color of the wire. So don't don't unclip them all or undo it without taking pictures or you know if you're gonna if you're gonna reuse the the shell, um, you know make sure you know what order they go in. It's probably in the drawings, but you save yourself a whole lot of trouble if you just take a look at it now. All right, this is starting to have a pretty good look to it. So we got the new switch in. It's definitely more stiff than the old one, but I imagine that'll wear in a little bit. It's already pre-greased. I'm noticing this is a darker plastic like the original, so I'm hoping that this is better quality than whatever that white ABS or whatever the hell it is they use, PVC. Um, you also want to make sure the cams here, they get a little bit of grease on them. I I'll probably put some dielectric grease here, and maybe I'll just put a spot of that there. You see, these are the cams. So you don't want those dry. Um, it just, you know reduces the wear a little bit. So next, we're gonna dig into this. We'll uh, undo the electric tape from here. We'll just start figuring out where wires go. Uh, it's pretty obvious they're colored pretty well. Now, I talked about this sleeve earlier. Of course, I did pull that off. Um, we just wanna slip that in there and we, we just wanna protect the wires coming through here, through the slot. So, you know, it goes up about that far. That's how far it was in there before. Uh, could have been that way. Yeah, it looks like it was that way. So it goes in about about that far. So just feed them through and slide that back into place. Very easy. All right, that's up in there. And now it's just a matter of sorting through these. There's two of them that go into that one connector. I think it might be those two in the center there. And then the rest, the uh, six go into the big connector. All right, so I think I got this right. This is... Uh, one connector and here's the other. I had to reuse this one and it's always a little bit of trouble. My pin tool sort of works on it. So uh, you gotta be careful not to destroy it. I recommend maybe buying one of these. I didn't realize it was here. I only saw this as recommended. So let's plug it in and then we'll test it before we put the wheel back on. So it's plugged in. Um, these two should be the horn right here. Horn blows, and let's put the key in. And we should get, and we do. So 
So it looks like we got it wired right. Cool. Well, the rest is just putting the steering wheel back on. Uh, check the manual. There is a torque spec for this. My torque spec is good and tight, but as you guys know, I have my way of things, of, way of doing things, and that's how I do it. Uh, the other thing I did want to mention too was um, I uh, I did pull the barrier. The boy, let's try that again. I did pull the bearing carrier off of here. And uh, I sneaked some grease in the back of the bearing there, just cleaned it up a little bit and put it back together. Uh, you take that out by taking these two nuts off of here. Also, I did put a little bit of dielectric grease here, here, just because it's easy to use. And I put it on the horn contacts as well. So the only thing that's bothering me about that is that it it's canceling when I turn that direction. I have a feeling that's because the plastic's so tight that it's actually popping the latches. It's popping out of the latches. That'll probably go away with a little bit of wear. But either way, I mean, it's canceling. It just cancels when you turn. So, which is fine. Doesn't really matter. It's not supposed to do that, though. It's supposed to go and keep clicking until you come backwards. But that probably just needs to wear in a little bit. It's, it's fine. At least it cancels now. So all back together, not too hard, you know, just give yourself a good hour or two and we'll catch you guys next time.